Hi everyone, my name is Vera and welcome to my stitching corner. Um, today we'll continue working on the uh, Sanctuary of Knowledge, or as I like to call this project, the library. Um, this is uh, where I'm at. I know that in my uh, April wrap up, I said I'm going to be working on this uh, 150 stitches every day. And guess what? That has not happened. So I'm about 900 stitches behind right now. Um, currently I'm sitting on 12,000, so it's 1.61%. Uh, um, and uh, it's a really small blob, but I'm working on the upper uh, right corner. Usually I start from the left, uh, sorry, lower right corner, uh, but I decided to try from the top, uh, which I kind of regret at this point because it's much more natural for me to stitch from the bottom towards the top, but that's okay. Um, I will show the preview somewhere here. Um, speaking of, this is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. The artwork is by Randall Spangler. Um, and this is the uh, supersized uh, max color version. So this is a big one. Um, so yeah, let's just keep on stitching. And um, I hope you uh, have a good stitching time with me because I usually do. <laughs> so let me just uh, load up some floss and we'll get rolling. In case you're hearing dog sounds in the back, uh, in the background, I um, usually we don't have uh, toys lying around for her to pick up uh, because we kind of keep them as a special treat and more of an interactive style. So she, um, toys are things that we play together and they're special. But uh, today I felt a little bit <laughs> extra generous to her. Um, well, maybe not extra generous, that's not the right word, but sometimes I let her have a whole bunch of toys um, and she roams free with them. And so she just hovers around me and tries to uh, get me to play with her, uh, which I usually don't. I just let her investigate on her own. How to how to play with the toys. Anyhow, all of that is to say that in case you hear f food paws, um, her mouthing things, it is her enjoying her toys. <laughs> um, and they're all uh, rubber toys. We don't. Um, we have only two soft toys because, um, as many of you know, dogs like to destroy things, and. Um, I really don't want her to get into this um, mentality of ripping things apart, like not soft things. So hopefully that registers to her as soft things like plushy animals um, are not for destruction <laughs> purposes. So, and, and it's of course uh, much safer for us to have her with uh, just regular rubber toys because then we don't feel concerned that if we accidentally miss, uh, miss a moment of her existence uh, and then all of a sudden she is like has something hazardous happening to her like choking or consuming things that will cause bowel obstruction so she has rubber toys lots of tug toys lots of ball toys and those are also nice because when we go outside it's much easier to clean them afterwards than uh, anything that has like fuzz on it. Oh, so how you been doing? How's your stitching life going? How How is the beginning of the summer or for some of us the end of the winter? I've been going to lots of muddy adventures and that's kind of fun but then you realize that it's not just the adventure itself, you also have to clean up afterwards, uh, both yourself and the dog. Thank you for those of you confirmed to me that 310 is a legit cone, uh, the color 310 in the size of a cone instead of a skein. I mentioned this to my husband who's Let's put it this way, a frugal man, which is good. Like we're not wasting money on things we shouldn't be, or at least try not to. And he's always appreciative of a good deal. So I mentioned that to him and he's like, 
Ooh, tell me more. I like the sounds of it. <laughs> um, so, especially with this piece, you know, I have, so right now I'm on the 310 color. So on Pattern Keeper, it indicates to me there's about 101,000 stitches of black remaining. Um, I started with the 104,000, so that is a lot of black, a lot of black skins, and I imagine it would be better to just have a big cone and chip at it than to keep on buying those skins that, just for this project, would be a lot. Um, I think it's about 2,000 stitches per skin. Like, that's kind of the rough estimation. Okay. So I had, um, sorry, I can't remember who asked me exactly. Um, I recognize your names when I read the comments, but I it's difficult for me to keep track of who said what and when. Um, so someone asked me um, about any recommendations of how to stitch in two hands, how to learn how to stitch in two hands um, when starting to stitch with, with a stand. And I thought, what a relevant question because I've been struggling with that uh, when I transitioned to the, um, a, the vintage garden piece. Um, I'm still kind of like getting used to stitching in two hands. Uh, it's not something that comes easy to me. Sometimes it looks that way, but keep in mind that usually when I do those stitch with me, my head is still fresh. <laughs> I try to do those uh, before I do a ton of stitching during the day. Um, so, you know, the, the more tired I am, the more difficult it is to stitch in two hands and so one of the things that I've mentioned in that comment is that softer fabrics, I find it much more challenging to stitch with two hands. And the reason for that is because with the softer fabrics, it's much, you have to have more, more control um, to not over tighten your stitches as you're stitching. And that control is really, really, um, I wanna say precise. Like you have to need, you need to have um, kind of like precision with your left hand. And I think that's the challenge with using, or not left hand, but uh, non-dominant hand, I should say. And that's the challenge of um, when you're starting to use your non-dominant left, sorry, non-dominant hand is the, um, the difficulty to have precision. So it's both um, the coordination of the fingers, of how you move the fingers in order to grip whatever you want to grip, but also um, the precision that you have because a, a needle is, is just a tiny point, right? Like the edge, the point of the needle. Um, but it also needs to go into a very precise location. And moreover, you have to, when you're pulling your needle out, you need to have enough precision to not over tighten your stitches. And with the Ada, it's much more simple because it's not a fabric that gives so quickly, like it has a structure to it. And if you over tighten the Ada, it's not as noticeable. I mean, of course it's noticeable, but it's not as noticeable as if you would over tighten uh, softer fabrics like Lugana's and Lennon's. Now, keep in mind, this is my own observation. Um, I don't have a scientific term to what I'm describing or, um, like a stitchery, <laughs> stitchery terminology to, to what I'm experiencing, but this is something that I've noticed. Um, and stitching with my non-dominant hand on softer fabrics is much more challenging because of that. So I find myself um, having difficulty with this precision of not over tightening my stitches. And with those softer fabrics, I would stitch uh, with both hands for a very short duration. And if I start noticing that I'm having um, I'm tightening my stitches, uh, then I stop and then I transition back to the one hand and then I use my non-dominant hand um, at the bottom of the piece, kind of like helping me guide the, guide the needle. 
So that's one thing. So just keep in mind that when you're stitching with two hands, um, when you're starting to do that, and I think most of us who do stitch in two hands can, can agree on it. I don't know how long it takes to get used to, and I think that's a very personal, um, it's a very personal question because some people, it, they, they're quicker to pick this up. Some, some, it takes them longer. Uh, for some, it just, it feels like it never happens. So just from, from that perspective, like don't get too frustrated um, or feel like you're not doing something. Um, who was I watching? Handworking me, maniac, maniac. Um, oh, I, I don't know her name. <laughs> I feel so bad. I think you know who I'm talking about. Stitching, no, handworking mania. Anyhow, she's um, she's quite big on floss too. So she's, um, I remember watching one of her f earlier videos about um, what was it about her stand. And she was mentioning how she all of a sudden saw a whole bunch of people stitching two-handed. And uh, she tried it and tried it and tried it and eventually was like, nope, that's absolutely not for me. I'm okay with having a slower speed, uh, but it's so uncomfortable. Or I'm not sure exactly what she said, but the bottom line is that she came to terms with just using one hand and having the second hand in the back as, as guiding hand. And I find that to be quite um, comfortable for me as well, to just kind of have that additional, um, where did the floss go? I dropped it on my pants and my pants are also black. <laughs> so black on black. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing about what I can say about um, stitching with two hands or starting to stitch with two hands, and that's also, again, part of my experience, is that I started stitching with two hands on Ada's. And I started on, I started on the 16 count Ada, and that was my, that is, still is, um, the uh, park, park project, which is a big heaven and earth design as well. And I am stitching it on 16 count, and I'm really glad that First of all, that it's on 16 count, uh, but secondly, that my stitching in two hand experience was on an Ada and on a 16 count. So it's a lower count, meaning the holes are bigger um, and the stitches are larger. And again, this is something that um, eased up my introduction to two hands. So again, coming back to this concept of precision and uh, controlling the hand to do those precise uh, motoric movements, um, that was a really gentle introduction. I think if I started on a 14 count, it would have been even even nicer, but 16 count is not bad at all. So what do, how did that happen? At first, I would stitch about a minute, trying to do a couple of stitches with my non-dominant hand and then I would stop, and then would stitch for 15 minutes um, with just one hand. And that felt like such a slow progress to me because for so long, I just couldn't, like, I would feel such, um, like, head pressure build up because I'm thinking so hard about what my hands are doing because I've never used my non-dominant hand in such a way. Um, we use our non-dominant hand for very basic uh, operations like holding a bag or um, doing something, I don't want to say like aggressive, but rough, like not precision stuff. Um, and all of a sudden I was required to do very precise things, which is picking up a needle and then placing it into, hole, into a hole and putting that pressure um, and controlling all that. Anyhow, it was a lot of things to think all at once. So at first I would stitch for literally just a minute and then come back for 15 minutes to stitch with one hand and then try another minute. Um, and that's what I did. It's like those little pulses of um, one minute at a time, then five minutes at a time, then about 10 minutes at a time. Um, and that's kind of 
how it all happened to me. And slowly and slowly, I got more and more used to it. And I was able to do longer and longer durations and faster and faster and have better and better control. Um, but even now, I mean, you can still watch my stitch with me's um, and you will notice that sometimes I just start stitching in one hand because <laughs> I get I get tired like and I don't want to over exhaust myself because I want to keep on stitching so I'm okay with uh, transitioning to one hand to kind of like give myself a little bit of a break and then pick it up Another thing that I notice uh, with stitching in two hands versus in one hand is that if I come to a really awkward um, location, so for instance, um, at the edge of uh, frames or cue snaps or hoops, or where places that my hand kind of takes on an awkward position, holding position, then it's easier for me to stitch with one-handed so I don't so for instance in here because it's right at the edge it's at the edge of the hoop there's like fabric collected here um, so it's easier for me to sometimes transition back to one hand stitching um, so keep keep in mind that it's not it's not a linear and uh, every area feels the same um, with stitching with two hands um, those are the kind of two things that I have. So if I would say a recommendation is try to stitch or to learn how to stitch with two hands on rougher fabrics, so Ada's, um, and lower counts. Uh, so 14 or 16, even 18 can work, depends on how comfortable you are with those counts. Um, and then um, start slow, so little pulses, one minute at a time, 10 minutes at a time, 15 minutes at a time. And if you ever want to kind of like revert back to one hand, just let yourself do it. Um, because the idea is not to, hmm. What's going on here? Oh, I see. Yeah. So the idea is not to torture yourself. Like this is a hobby, this is for fun and stitching in two hands is just a way to make this hobby um, it, like elevate the experience but if it doesn't elevate the experience then you're not obligated to stitch in two hands like not at all um, yeah those are kind of like a little bit of my tips and what I can recommend and um, just be patient with yourself <laughs> just be patient so I've been stitching in two hands for close to five months now and here I am stitching with one hand um, so that just gives you a, a reference of what that journey is like and hopefully um, I'll be able to stitch more and more with two hands in different fabrics but uh, even with those softer fabrics uh, like Lugana's and linens I don't want to risk over uh, over tightening my stitches for the sake of stitching faster or at least at this point I'm, I don't think it's worth it <laughs> um, so if anyone has any other tips and recommendations like comment them below so uh, because probably what I'm struggling with is somewhat similar to what you're struggling with but not one-to-one -one. Um, so I can recommend only the stuff that I've experienced or I've heard frequently, but not much more than that. Okay, that was another comment that came up and I said I'm going to mention it. I don't remember. I'll have to check it. <laughs> I'll have to check it later and maybe come back to it again. Sometimes, sometimes you guys have such excellent questions that I, I'm not able to even um, give you uh, my full response or recommendation um, because it requires a little bit. Just a second, I'm trying to pick up a color. I think a lot of those things I'm missing. Um, and I, because I want to give you a thorough 
thorough recommendation or a thorough explanation of something that you know it's actually valuable it it is much easier for me to to say it out loud and <clears throat> um you know take up 10 15 minutes to to actually go through it rather than just give you a a short like 50 word comment which i'm more than happy to do in the moment just to kind of like provide a brief brief overview of of it but yeah i hope that's more valuable for you as well to hear it from the horse's mouth <laughs> no i'm not a horsey <sighs> so what have i been up to lately i am exhausted after the semester the end of the term so i've been letting myself have a little bit of a break and i've been stitching and stitching and stitching and stitching <laughs> i've just i just need a little bit of me time um and that's what i've been doing um taking the dog out for longer walks enjoying the muddy weather as i said previously i have ordered uh on hold a whole bunch of um, books from the library um, and cross stitching books and they have been starting to arrive um, kind of like one or two books at a day um, I've put a hold of about 30 books 36 I think um, that are cross stitching patterns and it's really fun to just go and look over those uh, over those books and I I hope that once I receive most of them I'll uh, maybe make a video of library books, kind of like show you some of the previews of, of the patterns that those books have and what I'm thinking about stitching. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to show you any of the patterns inside of them, um, understandably, but still would be nice to see what kind of things you can stitch from books. Um, because I'm very curious myself. <laughs> so I've ordered a lot of uh, floral stuff and gardening stuff and um, some samplers, um, though most of them are a little bit not from my style, not to my taste. And uh, yeah, so that's been interesting to kind of like have those things trickle in. I'm oh, just checking where I'm supposed to be, right here. Um, what else have I been doing? We're organizing my house. Um, some of the stuff got a little bit neglected. Um, so yesterday we've been doing a thorough clean of the kitchen in the evening. Um, some of our cupboards with the food that we've been getting. Things have been thrown, thrown in, let's put it this way. So I think just reorganizing things a little bit so we have an easier access to uh, whatever is in our cupboards. Um, so that's what I've been doing as well. Clearing up some shelves from stuff like junk that we haven't used or been holding on to like old receipts and um, some mail stuff that checks deposits, things that you kind of like hold on to for a little bit, but then you have to get rid of it. So I've been going over of that. So yeah, just kind of like doing simple house errands that are not the worst, but also really make the living space much more comfortable. Um, ooh, here's what could be interesting for you. I have a lot of plants. Um, so in the Stitch With Me, sorry, not the Stitch With Me, the monthly wrap-ups, I you get to see a little bit of um, a few of the monsters that I have. Um, but it's a jungle in my house. So I have a whole bunch of propagated plants, but also some nursery bought plants, um, lots of tropical things. So not as many cactuses. Um, I have a lot of poposes and all sorts of different monsteras. Hi, girly. Do you want me to play with you with the squeaky toy? Well, I'm in the middle of stitching right now. That's right, I'm in the middle of stitching. So she came She came by my desk and kind of like stares at me right now with her squeaky birdie. Um, 
so the plants are thriving right now because of the um it's the growing season for them so i've been trimming a couple of plants and doing more propagation and planting those trimmings uh, once they sit in the water and kind of like uh, root up a little bit um i've also been having a bug infestation um it kind of sounds bad it's not that bad it's more like there's some kind of bug um, that's eating up the leaves a little bit. And I've been using neem oil and uh, soap to try to get rid of it, but um, it's really stubborn. It doesn't want to go away. Um, so I'm periodically um, treating my plants uh, before it gets too bad. Um, giving them rainfall shower waterings, uh, which they kind of enjoy because the dust gets off of them and they get like a good soak and the water uh, pulls down on the uh, roots so they grow downwards um, so they kind of when they're sitting inside their pots they're reaching uh, to the bottom to uh, collect all the moisture um, lots of new leaves are coming out and that always excites me because when I see something is about to pop up I hover over it and check it on a daily basis to see what's the state what's the state of the new leaf and when will i see it open up and how big is it going to be um so that's kind of fun we don't have access to a garden um when we used to have a balcony we uh grew tomatoes like cherry tomatoes on on the balcony um but now we don't have a balcony we have a juliet balcony which is basically just a sliding door um, and a railing so you don't fall off but there's just there's no surface um, yeah does anyone does anyone have a garden here like do you do you plant vegetables I suppose the seedlings would have been planted indoors a month ago and now it's nearing the time to transition everything outdoors. So I think this is the most active my doggy girl has been. <laughs> um, so I hope it's not too loud. My test of truth is going to be when I actually edit this video and I hear or I get to listen to how, how squeaky it is. And um, hopefully it's not too bad, but if, it's, if it is bad, then I will make sure that next time if I do a stitch with me. She's in a sleepy mode and all the toys are taken away from her. She's a, she's a border collie. So if that means anything to anyone, um, you probably understand what I'm talking about. She has an incredible, incredibly strong work ethic um, and for her with the toys, it's like a, 
it's a task. Uh, it's almost like a job. And she treats it as, I'm just gonna keep on going at it as long as it's in front of my face. So that's challenging sometimes for us to keep her occupied all the time. That's why I don't leave her with toys because she wouldn't stop. Um, she wouldn't stop. But on the other hand, she has an excellent off switch. Um, so she's able to sleep. Um, well, she sleeps much, the majority of the time. And yeah, we're enjoying this. We're enjoying the amount of smartness that she has. Though if you don't train it, it can get quite destructive. Um, we also really love everyone's reactions when we go outside because people say, oh, is that a border collie? And we say, yes, it is. And they say, yeah, they're the smartest dogs. And we say, too smart for their own good sometimes. Um, so people are kind of fascinated by seeing a border collie because I think um, they have this impression that they can do all sorts of different tricks and you can train them and that's absolutely true but that's also a lot of hard work because the dog has so much energy like mental energy that you have to you have to dedicate and um, a lot of time to, to occupy them and there she comes again in front of me hi girly is that a disc Oh yeah, I like that disc. You can go play by yourself. Go play. Go sniff around. <sighs> ah, doggy doggy. <laughs> Does anyone have dogs too? What kind of breeds do you have? So at first I thought I'm going to be working um, downwards in two page, two page width. So kind of like a wider, wider band. And um, I got a little bit, well not a little bit, a lot of very tired of the um, darker shades of the ceiling. So I decided to transition a little bit and instead of having a two page column, having a single page column and going downwards uh, just that way. So I think the edge of the page is somewhere here, so I always uh, spill over. Um, and then I also disabled the um, page break view on Pattern Keeper. So if anyone not familiar with Pattern Keeper, um, it's a digital, it's an app where you upload your PDF file um, and uh, you just have a digital format of your pattern and you can select by symbol and it highlights it highlights the symbols for you so you don't need to search where to stitch uh, and it's quite very comfortable for uh, full coverages or anything that has confetti because trying to fish out those symbols with your eyes can get like you can miss things and then you have to reload your thread and uh, so on um, but anyhow, so one of the options is to see the page breaks of where the page begins and where the page ends. Um, and that's for people who want to stitch page by page or they want to know how far they're into a page or the relative location. Um, and that's what I had before because I used the page as my um, estimation guide of how wide my stitching area is. Uh, but now that I have it roughly already stitched in, um, I find that seeing and knowing where the page ends is a little bit distractive for me. Um, and at the end of the day, it's just an arbitrary uh, figure. Um, because 
the project is going to be a project. It's not going to be just multiple pages. The pages is just a way to deliver the product. So I disabled, I disabled that view. So now I have a blank canvas of just uh, symbols in the grid, of course. And uh, so now I'm just stitching like that. And I'm kind of roughly filling in this area as I go and then go downwards. Um, I'm not as religious as I used to be with the um, typewriter, typewriter approach. Um, I just don't um, leave gaps. That's my general kind of approach at the moment of how I how I do it. So basically I would just choose the highest color um, that I can see and then work on that one and wherever it takes me. So if it takes me to the side, I go to the side. If it takes me downwards, I go downwards. Uh, but what happens is that I basically, as I go down, my whole entire area is covered and I don't need to go back. Um, and if for some reason the color that I chose to stitch leads me in a completely different direction, so like not downwards, but for instance sideways, you can see with the ceiling, um, that's okay because that means that in my next pass, I'll just have fewer stitches to stitch because I'll have already all of that stuff filled in. So I've been quite uh, satisfied with this type of uh, stitching because it gives me that freedom of cross country, but it also provides me with the satisfaction of seeing uh, something concrete being complete. And with the full coverage, uh, I find that unless you have every single stitch filled in, you don't actually get the sense of what you're stitching necessarily. Um, so let's see, 436. 435 and 437. So I'm missing a color. How about this one? 37, 76. Do you have any um, camping plans for the summer? Does anyone have a trailer? I know a lot of North Americans have those camper trailers, which are super nice, especially if you go camping. My husband and I, we camp, we do tent camping, uh, but still at campgrounds. And um, last year, I think we did a couple of camp trips and this year we haven't booked anything yet. Um, so we're located in, in, uh, in Canada, Ontario. Um, so we have lots of places to go. We have the Great Lakes next to us. We have some Northern Ontario things to look at and explore and experience. We have Southern Ontario. So lots of places to go. Um, but unfortunately what we've been experiences the proliferation of uh, ticks. So ticks are little creatures that latch onto um, skin and then they dig themselves in and then they do stuff that you don't want them to do. Um, but that in itself isn't as bad. What's bad is that they carry, some of them carry Lyme disease, um, which is quite severe if uh, people don't treat it. So there, I believe there are antibiotics to treat it, uh, but you have to do it in a timely manner before it starts acting on on the immune system and just in general. Um, I think Lyme disease causes uh, fatigueness, like severe fatigueness, um, for a, a long time, like we're talking about years. So we have to be very careful with, with ticks because they live in uh, grasses. Uh, tall grasses and if you walk uh, in grasses and you brush your leg up against the grass you have a chance of 
kind of like picking up a tick on yourself and not even noticing it. And then if they start latching onto you, you don't notice it afterwards. So we always check ourselves from ticks <laughs> at the end of each of our, of our hikes. Um, but that's kind of like what we've been experiencing in Ontario is that our winters are not as cold as they used to be. And um, the ticks are actually able to live through the season and their um, habitat kind of like spreads further and further up in locations that they used to not be. So luckily for animals, so for our doggy girl, she is um, um, she's treated for um, Lyme disease. So she both she gets both the vaccine as well as the monthly um, treatment. So basically, if she gets bitten, um, her body composition is toxic for the um, for the ticks. And so they die before they're able to pass on any uh, pathogens to her. But um, for the humans, there isn't such a thing yet. Uh, and so that's kind of a bit concerning for us because um, we can check ourselves all day long, but we don't want to contract any of the Lyme disease. And because we have the dog, um, then there's a greater chance that something will jump on her coat um, and then transfer to us because she roams through the grasses. And um, so last year we went to, uh, we went on a hike and we didn't know that that place had ticks. We weren't even expecting them because they were, it was in an unusual location for them. And then accidentally, um, I was checking her afterwards and we found about uh, five, five ticks on her. Um, some of them already were engorged, so that means that they kind of like stuck their like body into into her skin. So we had to take them out and we collected them into a Ziploc bag and uh, brought them to the vet and said, here, what do you want us to do with it? And they were kind of surprised to see it because they said, oh, where'd you get those sticks? Like which area? And so we indicated that to them and they're like, wow, that's a... Uh, that's a surprise. So she, she was fine. She was totally fine afterwards um, because of course we had her on treatment, so no issues there. But that kind of like makes you be very cautious and aware of where you are and what you're going through. I mean, location-wise <laughs> and camping and everything. So um, what did I do? This one and this one. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're thinking about in terms of camping for the season and where to go. So basically, um, our consideration of where to go camping is also influenced by the reported um, quantity of ticks. So we're not necessarily thinking about it as our first priority, but it's definitely something on our mind that we don't want to put ourselves in a situation where we camp where there's like an abnormal amount of, of ticks. All right, let's see what else do we do. Let's go back to 310. I have plenty of black to stitch. So <laughs> I try to alternate between uh, the black areas and the colorful areas because oh, stitching only black can get a little bit tiresome sometimes. Well, every time stitching too much black is tiresome for me. I like to see, sorry, I like to see shapes come into life and black does not really give me, give me that. Oh, now that I'm thinking, <laughs> told you so much about ticks and how horrific they are. Um, my apologies if that <laughs> was a little bit too too much for you all. Try to be mindful of that next time. Um, 
I try to keep my conversations positive and uplifting and <laughs> not scary. And I kind of like being mindful right now that maybe that was a little bit scary. Don't worry. The whole the whole thing with ticks is that you just need to you just need to be aware to check yourself afterwards and if there is anything to to see a doctor um, in a timely matter so they can prescribe the right medication to to avoid any sickness developing. Okay, let's see where I'm at. So here's something interesting. I was not even paying attention what hand I was stitching it with and how I was stitching. All I was paying attention to is where I'm stitching and what I'm saying. So maybe you can kind of like quickly rewind and see what was I doing. Was I stitching with one hand? Was I stitching with two hands? Was I alternating frequently? Um, because I can't even tell you what I was doing. I think I was kind of like on autopilot mode and... That will be an indication for you what my natural preference is. Who else is watching uh, Gemma's stitching or Gemma's stitching? Um, sorry if I butchered the <laughs> the name of the uh, of of her floss tube. Um, I'll link it at the bottom below as I always do. Um, she is about to finish her her piece. That's exciting. I've been I haven't been watching. Um, her stitch with me's um, that much uh, but I do keep up with her progress so whenever she posts those um, end of month progress or sometimes I just watch a couple of the first few minutes of um, of her stitch with me's and maybe sometimes I jump around a little bit just to see kind of where she's at but that's exciting I'm kind of excited for her too I'm looking forward to see what the whole entire finished piece looks like. Um, I think the whole project was about 48,000 stitches. That's what I see on the uh, pattern keeper that she has. Um, but yeah, are you guys excited too? I'm excited to see it done. And then she's going to move on to the Peacock by Heaven and Earth Designs. don't know what the pattern name is, but I know it's a Peacock. So that probably will be colorful and fun to watch. So she is an excellent example of stitching full coverages on lower counts, Ada's. So she does a lot of those 14 count full coverages and they're large full coverages, not not small full coverages. Um, so again, if anyone is interested in having something being stitched on a lower count and on an Ada, even though Heaven and Earth Designs uh, recommends the 18 count or the 25 count Luganas, you don't have to. <laughs> you can do it on something else and it's absolutely acceptable and reasonable to do it. And it, the beauty is not lost. The beauty is not lost. So um, 
I think her choice in fabrics can be an inspiration to all of us. I remember when I just started stitching my large full coverages and I was battling with all of my uh, fabric excess. I was watching her her demonstrating how she is fitting all of her fabric into a Q-snap. Um, and I thought, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I can do that too. <laughs> so here you go. All right, I'm about to finish that, finish that row, and I think this is going to be it for today because I'm starting to feel a little bit restless from sitting, and I'm looking at the time, and it's about 50 minutes, so. That gives me an indication that my biological clock is working excellent <laughs> because that's how usually the the length of how long I stitch. Um, yeah, I can't imagine sitting for too long is good, even if we can't do it. <sighs> well, I hope everyone has an excellent day whenever you're watching this. I know some of you watch it right away, some of you watch it later, so I hope you have an excellent remainder of your day, and I will see you in my next Stitch With Me's. Almost a bye. Just wait until I show you what we've done today. <laughs> I'm like wrapping it up ahead of time. I'm not kicking you out, I promise. my pin stitch and I think I stitched that part I just yeah okay so it's been 52 minutes 138 stitches so that's a pretty good speed for me, I think. Um, I'm not sure how fast people are stitching, but with the full crosses and this particular piece, if I stitch about 150 an hour, um, give and take, that's pretty good. And so was it 1.61%? So now we're at 1.63%. Yeah, it moves very slow. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed stitching with you. Um, and I'll see you in my uh, next video. Bye everyone.